Flavius Odoacer, also known as Flavius Odovasa, was a soldier, who in 476 became the first king of Italy. His reign is commonly seen as marking the end of the Western Roman Empire. Though the real power in Italy was in his hands, he represented himself as the client of Julius Nepos and, after Nepos' death in 480, of the emperor in Constantinople. Odoacer generally used the Roman honorific patrician, granted by the emperor Zeno, but is referred to as a king in many documents and he himself used it at least once and on another occasion it was used by the consul Basilius. Odoacer introduced few important changes into the administrative system of Italy. He had the support of the Roman Senate and was able to distribute land to his followers without much opposition. Unrest among his warriors led to violence in 477 to 478, but no such disturbances occurred during the later period of his reign. Although Odoacer was an Arian Christian, he rarely intervened in the affairs of the Orthodox and Trinitarian State Church of the Roman Empire probably of Syrian descent. Odoacer was a military leader in Italy who led the revolt of Herulian, Rugian, and Syrian soldiers that deposed Romulus Augustulus on 4 September AD 476. Augustulus had been declared Western Roman Emperor by his father, the rebellious general of the army in Italy, less than a year before, but had been unable to gain allegiance or recognition beyond central Italy. With the backing of the Roman Senate, Odoacer thenceforth ruled Italy autonomously, paying lip service to the authority of Julius Nepos the last Western emperor and Zeno the emperor of the East. Upon Nepos' murder in 480 Odoacer invaded Dalmatia to punish the murderers. He did so, executing the conspirators, but within two years also conquered the region and incorporated it into his domain. When Illus, master of soldiers of the Eastern Empire, asked for Odoacer's help in 484 in his struggle to depose Zeno, Odoacer invaded Zeno's westernmost provinces. The emperor responded first by inciting the Rugi of present-day Austria to attack Italy. During the winter of 487 to 488 Odoacer crossed the Danube and defeated the Rugi in their own territory. Zeno also appointed the Ostrogoth Theodoric the Great, who was menacing the borders of the Eastern Empire, to be king of Italy, turning one troublesome, nominal vassal against another. Theodoric invaded Italy in 489 and by August 490 had captured almost the entire peninsula, forcing Odoacer to take refuge in Ravenna. The city surrendered on 5 March 493. Theodoric invited Odoacer to a banquet of reconciliation and there killed him. Odoacer is the earliest ruler of Italy for whom an autograph of any of his legal acts has survived to the current day. The larger portion of a record of Odoacer granting properties in Sicily and the island of Melita on the Adriatic coast to Pierius and issued in 488, was written in his reign. Ethnic affiliation Except for the fact that he was not considered Roman, Odoacer's ethnic origins are not completely known. Both the anonymous Valasianus and John of Antioch state his father's name was Erdeco. However, it is unclear whether this Erdeco is identical to one or both men of the same name who lived at this time. One was an ambassador of Atia to the court in Constantinople and escorted Priscus and other imperial dignitaries back to Attila's camp. The other, according to Jordanus, is mentioned with Hanulfus as chieftains of the Syriae who were soundly defeated by the Ostrogoths at the river Bolia in Pannonia sometime in the late 460s. Since Sebastian Tillamont in the 17th century, all three have been considered to be the same person. Jordanus describes Odoaso as king of the Tersilingi. However, in his Romana Jordanus also describes him as a member of the Rugi. The Consularia Italica calls him king of the Heroli, while Theophanes appears to be guessing when he calls him a Goth. Marchalinus comes calls him the king of the Goths. 
More recently Reynolds and Lopez explored the possibility that Odoacer was not Germanic in their 1946 paper, published by the American Historical Review, making several convincing arguments that to his ethnic background might lie elsewhere. One of these is that his name, Odoacer, for which an etymology in Germanic languages had not been convincingly found could be a form of the Turkish Otofa, or the shorter form, Otgar. If Ratchis could become Radagarasus, why could Otofa or Otgar not have become Odoasa or Odovasa, they ask. Other sources believe the name Odoasa is derived from the Germanic Ordawix, from AUD, wealth, and WAKR, vigilant. This form finds a cognate in another Germanic language, the titular Edwasa of the Old English poem Wolfen Edwasa. Odoas's identity as a Hun was then accepted by a number of authorities, such as E. A. Thompson and J. M. Wallace Hadrill, despite Otto J. Manchin Helfen's reasonable objection that personal names were not an infallible guide to ethnicity. Subsequently, while reviewing the primary sources in 1983, Bruce McBain pointed out several uncomfortable silences in the primary sources and proposed that while his mother might have been Syrian and his father Thuringian, in any case he was not a Hun, before Italy. Possibly the earliest recorded incident involving Odoacer is from a fragment of a chronicle preserved in the Decem Libri Historiarum of Gregory of Tours. Two chapters of his work recount, in a confused or confusing manner, a number of battles fought by King Childeric I of the Franks, Egidius. Count Paul, and one, Adivacrius, or Odovacrius. If this is an account of Egidius a victory over the Visigoths, otherwise known from the Chronicle of Hydatius, then this occurred in 463. Reynolds and Lopez in their article mentioned above, suggested that this Adivacrius, or Odovacrius, may be the same person as the future king of Italy. This suggestion has been accepted by some scholars. It appears to explain why Lewis Thorpe named this person Odoacer in his translation of Gregory's work. The first certain act recorded for Odoacer was shortly before he arrived in Italy. Eugapius, in his Life of St. Severinus, records how a group of barbarians on their way to Italy had stopped to pay their respect to the holy man. Odoacer, at the time, a young man, of tall figure, clad in poor clothes, learned from Severinus that he would one day become famous. When Odoacer took his leave, Severinus made one final comment which proved prophetic. Go to Italy, go, now covered with mean hides, soon you will make rich gifts to many, leader of the Fodrati. By 470, Odoacer had become an officer in what remained of the Roman army. Although Jordanus writes of Odoacer as invading Italy, as leader of the Scari, the Herali and allies of various races, modern writers describe him as being part of the Roman military establishment. Based on John of Antioch's statement that Odoacer was on the side of Rissima at the beginning of his battle with the Emperor Anthemius in 472, Procopius goes as far as describing him as one of the Emperor's bodyguards. When Orestes was in 475 appointed Magister Militum and Patrician by the Western Roman Emperor Julius Nepus, he became head of the Germanic Foderati of Italy. However, Orestes proved to be ambitious, and before the end of that year Orestes had driven Nepus from Italy. Orestes then proclaimed his young son Romulus the new emperor as Romulus Augustus, called Augustulus. However, Nepus reorganized his court in Salona, Dalmatia and received homage and affirmation from the remaining fragments of the Western Empire beyond Italy and, most importantly, from Constantinople, which refused to accept Augustulus and branded him and his father traitors and usurpers. About this time the Fodrati, who had been courted on the Italians all of these years, had grown weary of this arrangement. In the words of J. B. Berry, they desired to have roof trees and lands of their own, and they petitioned Orestes to reward them for their services, by granting them lands and settling them permanently in Italy. 
Orestes refused their petition, and they turned to Odoacer to lead their revolt against Orestes. Orestes was killed at Placentia and his brother Paulus outside Ravenna, the Germanic Fodrati, the Syrians and the Heruli, as well as a large segment of the Italic Roman army, then proclaimed Odoacer Rex Italiae. In 476 Odoacer advanced to Ravenna and captured the city, compelling the young emperor Romulus to abdicate on September 4, according to the anonymous Valesianus. Odoacer was moved by Romulus's youth and his beauty to not only spare his life but give him a pension of 6,000 solidi and sent him to Campania to live with his relatives. Following Romulus Augustus's deposition, according to the historian Malchus, upon hearing of the accession of Zeno to throne, the Senate in Rome sent an embassy to the Eastern Emperor and bestowed upon him the Western Imperial Insignia. The message was clear. The West no longer required a separate emperor, for one monarch sufficed to rule the world. In response, Zeno accepted their gifts observing, the Western Romans had received two men from the Eastern Empire and had driven out one and killed the other. Anthemius, the Eastern Emperor conferred upon Odoaso the title of patrician and granted him legal authority to governing Italy in the name of Rome. Zeno also suggested that Odoaso should receive Nepus back as emperor in the West, if he truly wished to act with justice, although he accepted the title of patrician. Odoacer did not invite Julius Nepus to return to Rome, and the latter remained in Dalmatia until his death. Odoacer was careful to observe form, however, and made a pretense of acting on Nepus' authority, even issuing coins with his image. Following Nepus's murder in 480, Zeno legally abolished the co-emperorship and ruled as sole emperor. Berry, however, disagrees that Odoacer's assumption of power marked the fall of the Roman Empire. It stands out prominently as an important stage in the process of the dismemberment of the empire. It belongs to the same catalogue of chronological dates which includes AD 418, when Honorius settled the Goths in Aquitaine, and AD 435, when Valentinian ceded African lands to the Vandals. In AD 476 the same principle of disintegration was first applied to Italy. The settlement of Odovoker's East Germans, with Zeno's acquiescence, began the process by which Italian soil was to pass into the hands of Ostrogoths and Lombards, Franks and Normans and Odovacare's title of king emphasized the significance of the change, King of Italy. In 476, Odoacer became the first barbarian king of Italy, initiating a new era. Unlike most of the last emperors, he acted decisively. According to Jordanus, at the beginning of his reign he slew Count Bracelar at Ravenna that he might inspire a fear of himself among the Romans. He took many military actions to strengthen his control over Italy and its neighboring areas. He achieved a solid diplomatic coup by inducing the Vandal king Geyseric to cede to him Sicily. Noting that Odovoker seized power in August of 476, Geyseric died in January of 477, and the sea usually became closed to navigation around the beginning of November. FM Clover dates this session to September or October 476 when Julius Nepus was murdered by two of his retainers in his country house near Salona. Odoacer assumed the duty of pursuing and executing the assassins, and at the same time established his own rule in Dalmatia. As Berry points out, it is highly important to observe that Odovoker established his political power with the cooperation of the Roman Senate, and this body seems to have given him their loyal support throughout his reign. So far as our meagre sources permit us to draw inferences, he regularly nominated members of the Senate to the consulate and other prestigious offices. Basilius, Decius, Venantius, and Manlius Boethius held the consulship and were either prefects of Rome or praetorian prefects. Symmachus and Sivadius were consuls and prefects of Rome, another senator of old family. 
Cassiodorus was appointed a Minister of Finance, A. H. M. Jones also notes that under Odoacer the Senate acquired enhanced prestige and influence in order to counter any desires for restoration of imperial rule. As the most tangible example of this renewed prestige, for the first time since the mid-3rd century copper coins were issues with the legend S.C. Jones describes these coins as fine big copper pieces, which were a great improvement on the miserable little nummy hitherto current. And not only were they copied by the Vandals in Africa, but they formed the basis of the currency reformed by Anastasius in the Eastern Empire. Although Odoacer was an Arian Christian, his relations with the Chalcedonian church hierarchy were remarkably good. As G.M. Cook notes in her introduction to Magnus Felix and Odius A Life of St. Epiphanius, he showed great esteem for Bishop Epiphanius. In response to the bishop's petition, Odoacer granted the inhabitants of Luguria a five-year immunity from taxes, and again granted his requests for relief from abuses by the Praetorian prefect. One wonders at Enodiasa, brevity, observes Cook, to the thirteen years of Odovocare's mastery of Italy, a period which embraced nearly half the episcopate of Epiphanius. Enodius devotes but eight sections of the Vita five of which are taken up with the restoration of the churches. Cook uses an odious brevity as an argumentum ex silentio to prove that Odoacer was very supportive of the church. An odious was a loyal supporter of Theodoric. Any oppression, therefore, on the part of Odovocare would not be passed over in silence. She concludes that an odious so silence may be construed as an unintentional tribute to the moderation and tolerance of the barbarian king. The biography of Pope Felix III in the Liber Pontificalis openly states that the pontiffs Tenure fell during Odoas's reign without any complaints about the king. In 487 Odoacer led his army to victory against the Rugins in Noricum, taking their king Felithius into captivity, when word that Felithius, a son, Fredericus, had returned to his people. Odoacer sent his brother Onolphus with an army back to Noricum against him. Onolphus found it necessary to evacuate the remaining Romans and resettle them in Italy. The remaining Rugians fled and took refuge with the Ostrogoths. The abandoned province was settled by the Lombards by 493.